Hey, Internet friend, this is Magic Brad with Synergy Cafe, and I got my little coffee here, and uh, we're doing some new technology. I normally do this on a thing called Whereby, and uh, it looks like right now, for some reason, the video is on my <laughs> my guest as opposed to as, as opposed to on me, so that's kind of weird. Hello. Okay, so his name is Peter, and normally this thing, I, there, there it goes, it just shot over back to me. So this is sort of a test, we're learning a little bit, and... Uh, it just shot back over to me, so maybe it's just a delay or a lag in the internet, you know, bandwidth and all that kind of stuff. Anyways, Peter, how you doing? I am great. How are you, Brad? Wonderful and a half. This is this is good. I like this new the, using Zoom because it's uh, just a little different, but it's all good. It's part of life, right? <laughs> Always learning, right? Yeah, and um, so this is our first interview. We have not done one before, but it's uh, we'll, we'll make it happen. And I wanted to just talk with you a little bit because you got a background in real estate, and I'm always fascinated with real estate in that it's something that's not going to go away, and yep. it's uh, very sustainable. Yeah, you're going to need a roof over your head, whether you're, right. uh, you know, whether you're renting or you own or you have a business or etc. Yeah, and I remember it. Uh, there was a situation that happened back in 2008. A lot of that stuff. Uh, oh my God, it all collapsed, but it comes back. Yep. Most it just does, right? People didn't think it would. <laughs> Here we are, in probably the best market of our lifetimes. So. Well, we started in a cave, and that's real estate. Yep. <laughs> well, how long have you been in real estate? Uh, I got my real estate license and bought my first property in September of 2001. And I had a little hiatus in there for a couple of years from during the worst of the bubble. And I had just gotten divorced and it was just kind of messy. And so um, I re-entered in 2012 and here we are today, 2019, almost 2020. So what did you do while you were in hiatus? In hiatus? Okay, so... <laughs> I invested in things that I had no business investing into. Oh, one of those. <laughs> I have um, a lot of oil stuff. And, um, uh, you know, it's one of those deals where I, I met a guy and I, and I thought I could, you know, kind of trust him or whatever. And, and maybe I could, but uh, everything we did went sideways. So I, I don't know. I don't know if it was him or what we were putting our money into or whatever it was. In any case, eventually I got back in real estate and, I doubt that I'll ever look back. I think until I completely 100% retire, I would see myself being involved in this in this industry in some capacity. Well, you know, you, if you being an entrepreneur, there's always that shiny object thing. So as long as you keep like 80% in your real estate and then just play on the side with other stuff, then you're probably more safe. And the cool thing about real estate, I mean, look where it's gone with the whole Airbnb stuff. And you don't even have to be in uh, a real estate um agent or anything you just need to know that my marketplace is real estate and you can you can get into um like in my business of events and stuff doing yeah. retreats or team building conferences and those are still real estate because you're staying at a hotel or a bed and breakfast or a conference center and all that kind of stuff absolutely very cool yep so if aside from real estate what do you do <laughs> um well when i you know i'll be honest with you um I don't know if we have time to like kind of talk about my story a little bit, but a little bit, you know, my story kind of part of it, part of my life, um, you know, and when you look at, um, you know, kind of some of the things I've been through and struggled with and, um, you know, I dealt with alcoholism in my life for many years. And this last year I finally, um, you know, took the initiative and kind of had a spiritual awakening and I realized that it had been um, really controlling my life for a long period of time. And I had just kind of had it. And the, the great part about it is that I didn't have any legal issues. I didn't have anything like that to deal with. I just had life to deal with. And um, I didn't like the way, the direction that I was going um, in my personal life, with my family and my business, anything. And so um, April 1st, um, I know it's kind of funny, April Fool's Day, right? <laughs> and it is, it's kind of the story of my life. There's a lot of, um, well, you've got the synergy thing. There's some synergy between April 1st and 
sobering up and doing all, you know, making some lifestyle changes because I'm kind of a constant prankster, jokester. I'm always, you know, I, I, when I met my fiance, I told her, I said, um, I, I love laughing at myself because um, nobody else does. So <laughs> somebody has to do it. Yeah. So All of, of an audience. <laughs> yeah. So it's kind of fitting when um, my, my sobriety date is April 1st. Um, and I, you know, I really liked working out before that. And I, I was big into lifting and stuff like that. But, you know, I gained a lot of weight and I, and I didn't feel good. And so when I made the decision to quit drinking, I also um, really got serious about my diet. I got serious about working out. Um, recently, I changed gyms. I joined a gym called Fitaholic, and I joined a six-week challenge. I'm learning how to eat better, eat organic, eat um, healthy, nutritious, like, and make sure that I'm getting all the categories in there, fats, uh, complex carbohydrates, proteins, veggies, fruits, that kind of stuff. And I'll tell you, the interesting thing is when I first started, I'm not going to lie, it was a little difficult because, you know, we all get used to eating pizza and, you know, hamburgers and yeah. whatever else. But what I discovered in there is that there's a lot of really great things that you can eat from a health standpoint. It's just like shifting a little bit here and there. So like, for instance, instead of having just like the normal 80-20 hamburger, you know, I get, I buy the more expensive grass fed 93% and I feel so much better. And then instead of using normal bread, I use this Ezekiel bread and, um, you know, I, I eat good rice and sweet potatoes and red potatoes. And well, I can make a huge difference. We were at, with some friends last night and this guy made, he made this really nice salad and it yeah. was all healthy, really good food, but it's very, very tasty. So yeah. it's just a subtle change. You know, you can go through the drive through and get an egg McMuffin, but that might, uh, and I had a situation like that where I had a mild stroke. Yeah. I was working really hard and I just, just didn't have time to, you know, sit down and eat and enjoy my meals. Had an air quotes, didn't, didn't have time, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was just so busy. And then um, one day I was looking out the window. I had a handful of business cards and it felt like someone did this to my face. I turn around, there's nobody around. And I look on the ground, the business cards are there. So I had like a three minute episode of a mild stroke where I was talking kind of funny and yeah, that's crazy. I thought, cause I was just daily, my daily routine was to stop, drive through McDonald's, get an egg McMuffin and a cherry pie and a cup of coffee and go to work. Yeah. And that's my breakfast. That's, and that's pretty normal. Once in a while you could do that, but you can't be doing mm -hmm. that every day. <laughs> well, what I've learned is, you know, like for instance, last night, my family was eating lasagna. So I had lasagna with my family, but I also included some vegetables and some other things, you know, to add to it. And, you know, I didn't go hog wild either. I didn't eat half the tray. <laughs> so, but, you know, by adding in those other things, I also tempered my, my appetite. And, um, you know, I woke up, I got my, my workout in. Uh, Thursday morning is kickboxing day, which is fun. It's intense. And Where do you really, do that? What's that? Where do you do that? <clears throat> um, it's the gym that I go to is called Fitaholic and uh, it's a newer gym up here and they're really, um, the owners have a lot of background and, um, you know, with, uh, food and nutrition and one of the owners used to own a couple of GNC stores. So you know, okay. he's really in tune with all that stuff. So, um, I really enjoyed it. I'm in week five. Uh, uh, of six I haven't missed a workout <laughs> so I'm like 28 out of 28 now well, so I got a, I got a martial arts background that's that's why I was kind of curious oh, do you? great workout for you because it gets oh, your man. Balance, gets your, yeah I got a second degree black belt taekwondo Lear, do you really yeah we should talk like I'd like to I've always thought that it would be fun to learn a bit a little bit more about that we just it is it, it's literally saved my life once um mm -hmm. I was uh working at this place and my car was not that dependable so in the middle of winter i had to go out and get it started so i go out get it started and i'm running back into the building not really watching where i'm going and here comes this big white cadillac that i didn't see in the snow and oh, i'm wow. running along it was like a slow motion thing i'm running also oh, like, oh no and i know i can't stop because i'd slide and get ran over i know i'm not going to beat it so what else do you do so i just drive my knee up as high as i could and it jumped up and it clipped me in the calf and knocked my shoe off and ripped my jacket all up. Going about 30, 40 so miles an hour. Worse. If you didn't, if you didn't know that hip. move, huh? that, that would have been so much worse. Yeah, would have hit me in the hip. Yeah. Over. Totally. Yeah. So I believe it saved my life. 
And I've had multiple situations where, you know, you, when you fall on the ice, you know how to fall. That kind oh, of yeah, sure. Reflexes and just being able to be aware of the, your surroundings and you're walking around, you know, downtown Minneapolis or something. You just know, you don't have to fight anybody, but you know yeah. that some situations might be happening. So maybe you should take a right instead of a left. So yep. martial arts is good for you. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. Well, you know, and then, you know, going back to the, the health and, and that kind of stuff too, you know, the other thing that I've really become much more in tune with is the spiritual side of my life and, you know, waking up and having that time to pray and meditate and do the things that I need to do to kind of get my mind right for the day. And then, and then immediately following that, go straight up to the gym, you know, then you come home and you eat a, a, a healthy meal and like, you know, and then you get on your day with your business and, you know, make sure that you've got a schedule of things that you're going to accomplish and be productive. Yeah, it it's makes a amazing. huge difference, like in your business and stuff, because now your mind is more clear. And you know, as soon as you wake up and you start thinking, OK, I got to do this, I got to do that, I got to do this. Why don't you tap into that higher source and find out what you're supposed to be doing today? And you might get better information than the things that you think you need to do. Maybe there's a you know, whether you call it God, spirit, or universe, or whatever, get yeah. in that meditative state. And then yep. when you're eating healthy, like you said, you're just going to be more, more on instead of lethargic. And you're on the right path, my son. Yeah, thanks, Brad. <laughs> you know, it's just one of those things, though, that, and I know, you know, we've talked about your, your program and creating the Synergy Cafe. And, and, you know, I've looked at it and seen all the things that you know, that you've kind of put together there. And it is amazing how one feeds directly into the next thing. And when you have those all in true synergy and I mean, how your life can um, take such a, um, it's so much easier and things seem to move better. And like, it's not perfect. You know, my life isn't perfect by any means. Like I've got some struggles right now that I'm working through in my business and other things. Um, but the good thing about having clarity of mind and body and spirit is that I actually can work through those things. I'm not trying to drink it away. I'm not trying to stress eat it away. You know, I, like those things are, are long gone, you know. And so I think I actually, there's ways of simplifying things, too. I think as humans, we try and make things more complicated and figure out if we could put another layer on, maybe this is a solution. The right. reality is take some layers off yeah. and simplify it. And that's what I'm that's what I'm doing with this Synergy Cafe and my other Synergy brands is weaving them together and getting rid of some of the complex things. And this is not real relevant, but like software. Sometimes software is just so complicated yep. that it doesn't work. Yeah, that's a great yeah. analogy. And then, and like with anything, even like, you know, you go and buy a new car and everything is run on every electronic system known to man. And the minute one of those things goes wrong, everything goes wrong, right? Exactly, exactly. It's like the, the old uh, fax machine printer and scanner. Yeah. If it goes bad, you don't have any of it. So. Right. Well, I don't like to do these too long. I like to keep them kind of short so people have an opportunity to digest it. But um, before uh, we sign off here, your real estate thing, don't, aren't you developing a real estate course? I know that there's a zillion of them out there, but you're, when I was talking with you the other day, you said you've got something that's kind of unique and different. Yeah, so we've already uh, done several interviews with some local and national experts. Um, we're doing some editing and then we're putting together a coaching series and with the idea that we create something that's real life that people, anybody can afford on the subscription basis, you know, uh, a, a real low monthly type cost. Yeah, where, like some of those things where you walk out of there with a, a suitcase and $5,000 worth of stuff. Yeah, that's what we don't want. Like we don't ever want to do, do that bait and switch. It's just a, a low cost. And what we really want to do is we want to reach a lot of people that w are interested in being an entrepreneur, being a real estate investor, and, you know, here's the cool thing, Brad, is that the concepts that we're going to teach people are true no matter what they're doing in life or in business. Mm -hmm. So when you get that foundation right, um, you know, treating people well and, you know, having a business plan and, you know, treating it like a business. You know, a lot of people get into real estate investing because they like it and it's like their hobby. And, you know, one of the big things that I want to teach people is when you're dealing with 50, 100, 200. I mean, these are big numbers. You can't treat this like a hobby. So right. we're going to kind of 
you know, peel, peel the layers back and bring it down to its core, help people build a good foundation and then build from there so that they can actually, no matter if they're doing one house a, a year or a hundred houses a year, um, we're gonna help them build that foundation so that they can be successful. Well, that's what I was uh, just thinking too. Maybe it's not about what to do. Maybe it's more like what not to do. And you yeah. get rid of all that stuff because the, the reality is if a person's got some money, they don't need to have the knowledge if they got somebody that has the knowledge and you just kind of JV and joint venture and partner up on it. No, that's true. You're a real estate person with just uh, maybe a small investment. I, I'm invested in REITs in my, in my retirement stuff. So I guess I'm in real estate, but I don't do anything other than put money into it. You absolutely are though. That's the reality. Yeah. It's just smart. I think real estate's a very savvy thing. It's smart, savvy thing to do. That's created so, more millionaires than any other industry. So. That's what they say. <laughs> Let's see here. Where are we at? Peter, why don't we uh, close this off? And uh, if you've got anything uh, you want, final things you want to say to you, a URL or something you want to show, or maybe we do that next time. Or you know, We don't have that yet, but um, the name of our course is going to be Real Estate Investing Academy. Okay. Um, and so we'll get that out there. And, and if it's okay with you, we should do another interview coming up and then I can actually give those links and we can give a little bit more um, information on that. Well, um, I plan yeah. on doing, uh, I've got a lot of these things that I've done and I've got them housed all over the place on YouTube and other blogs and stuff, but I'm building something out that's also an academy. So, <laughs> well, and the other thing I'll say before we sign off is, you know, if you're, if you're a person that wants to get involved in real estate investing, you don't understand where to go. I'm really easy to find. You can Google me, give me a call and you know, we can, work one-on-one -on -one and um, we'll find some deals and you know maybe if you've got a deal or if you've got money or both or whatever um, you know I can help you. So your name I think is right in this thing Peter Hagen. It's yep, right in Peter Hagen and I'm at National Realty Guild is where my license is at if you probably type in those keywords you'll 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 easily find me. Okie doke well if you want to stick on here for a little bit I'm going to sign the recording off and then we can chat further so that's it for today, Peter. I appreciate you taking the time, okay? Thanks a lot, Brad. Peace. All right.